A few weeks ago, I showed how to use Power Query as part of a process for building financial reports from trial balances. This is what one comment said. Instead of replace nulls with zero step, why not use the coalesce function, same result, no extra step? My response was this. Good call on using coalesce, that would be a nice solution, though probably a bit more advanced than I wanted to go. Well, today we're looking at that bit more advanced. We're looking at what is coalesce in Power Query, how does it work, and when should we use it? So if you're ready, let's get started. If you want to work along with this video, then click the link in the descriptions box below. That will give you instructions on how you can download the example file that I'm using. So once you've got that, let's head over to our first example. Here was our original situation. I had a debit column and a credit column, and they both contained null values. What we wanted to do was to calculate a value column of debit minus credit. So I went to add column and then custom column. I'm going to call this value. And then our calculation was going to be debit minus credit. When I click OK, the problem is that anytime we calculate on a null value, it always returns null. So I suggested going back to the previous step, then going to debit and credit, selecting those, then transform replace values. We'll insert that step and we want to replace the word null with the value of zero. And I click OK, and now our value column calculates correctly. But the commenter was right. We don't need this step of replacing values. So I'm going to delete that, delete that step. So now in our custom column, we have nulls all the way down, but we can use the coalesce operator. So debit, question mark, question mark, zero and credit question mark question mark zero so those two question marks are the coalesce operator and when we commit that it returns the correct value so what does coalesce do it returns the first value that isn't null so if we look at the first row of our example you can see our debit column has a null value so we've said return the first non-null value out of debit and zero. Therefore, for this line, the value returned is zero. We do the same with our credit column, but our credit column has a value. Therefore, it doesn't return zero, it returns that value. Which means if we ever find ourselves in a situation of having to replace null with another value, or using a formula such as if old value equals null, then new value else old value, in those scenarios, coalesce is a great option. This is probably the most useful example of the coalesce operator. It checks whether you've subscribed to our YouTube channel. So if subscribe equals null, it then returns the word yes, because why wouldn't you want to subscribe? So go ahead and click that subscribe button and avoid those null values. Here's our data for example two. We have an item and a value. You'll see in our value column that we have a null value. So that means that if we filter, on our values, so number filter, and we want a value that's less than or equal to, let's say 50, for example, I'll click OK, that that null value disappears. But is that value null because it's actually zero? Probably. So therefore, what we want to do is to replace that null value with a zero. We can change this in the formula bar at the top, so we can have our value, and then we'll use that coalesce operator, and if it's null, it will return zero. And when we commit that, you can see that we now get that null value. So we've now found a way to filter on values less than 50, but also include null values as zeros. In this example, we're looking at what might happen with a negotiation process with eight suppliers. So for example, they might all give us an initial price. Then we negotiate and some of them will give us a better price. Then we negotiate again and some of them then might give us an even better price. And we want to find out what's the final price that we can use. Unfortunately, because we didn't get a price in every single round, we have a lot of null values. So what we're going to do is go to add column and then custom column. And we're going to use our coalesce operator. We'll call this final price. So we can say that we want round two 
and then the coalesce operator, and then round one, and then the coalesce operator, and then the initial price. So we can add as many items as we like in here. It's going to start with round two, and if it finds a null value, it will then go to round one. If it finds a null value, it will then go to the initial price. But at any of those previous stages, if it finds a value, it will return the first non-null value. So we'll click OK, and that now returns our final price, which is the last non-null value. Had we used a nested if statement, that could have become quite cumbersome and quite a lot of syntax, while coalesce makes it nice and easy for us. If we're working with lists in Power Query, it would be really useful if they were a list.coalesce function. Unfortunately, there isn't, but we can achieve the same result with two other functions. So here's my list in Power Query. It contains two null items at the top, and we want to return the first non-null item. So I'll click on the FX icon to create a new step. The first function we're going to use is list.first. That will return the first item from a list. The next function we're going to use is list.removeNulls. So list.removeNulls, and my list was called my list. And then I'll close bracket, close bracket. And when we commit that, we get the first non-null value, which is alpha. So by combining those two functions together, we can create the equivalent of a list.coalesce function in Power Query. And that's it. That's how we can use the coalesce operator inside Power Query. If you want another awesome Power Query video, then click there. That's the video that you want to watch next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.